you know, sitting in a dirty pram. <laughs> Why? Is Eli crawling for a soccer ball? I don't know where to play it. Go again, Jelly. <laughs> Not very interested in cleanliness, so. Hi crafty people! I love to sew for my kids, but there are a few things that I really wouldn't bother sewing for them. Today, I'm going to share with you my top 10 things that I would not sew for a baby. Maybe you're wondering what qualifies me to talk about my opinion on things you should sew for your baby. I feel like I'm pretty qualified. I am pregnant with our fourth baby. I have three older children. I have Elijah who is four and a half, Isabel who is three in December, Alice who's 15 months, and I'm due with our fourth in February. So by February I'll have four children aged four years old and younger. So I feel like I've got a pretty good idea of what the best things you need for a baby are and what things you can make rather than buy and in this case the things that you should not bother making either because it's easier to just buy them or it's an item that you just do not need at all. My name's Marie and this channel is all about motivating mums to make and mend. I hope that by sharing this video with you today you'll find out some of the things that you should avoid making either for your own baby or as gifts. And next week I'll be sharing with you my top 10 things that are the best things to make for a baby. If you're looking forward to seeing that video next week of my top 10 must make items then don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be notified when my next video is up. So here we go, my opinion on the top 10 worst things to make for a baby. Worst baby projects. Item number one. This is what inspired this whole video really. In so many sewing forums, I see people asking how to make burp cloths. I have these ones, these were gifted to me. They're beautiful, they're well made, but I do not use them. I find that they take ages to dry and in Australia here where we don't use an electric dryer, we just use the good old sun, these take forever to dry. They're massive and unless your baby has got really bad reflux, your baby's not going to chuck up this much and need this much of a burp cloth. You only need something really thin and light because as soon as they chuck up on it, you take it off. So it's not like it needs to be there for ages for it to sink in. So I feel very opinionated about burp cloths. Just don't bother with them. They're not worth the hassle. Just use any old face washer or a piece of swaddle that you've chopped up or a cloth nappy, anything. But I really think it's a waste of your time to be bothered sewing really fancy looking burp cloths. Item number two is the PPTP. If you're pregnant with a boy or you have a boy, maybe you've heard of these before. These are a cone of absorbent material that you're meant to put over your little baby boy's parts so that they don't wee on you when you're changing their nappy. They would be a waste of time to sew in my opinion because they really wouldn't get used. They would get lost in the wash because they're so tiny or I just wouldn't bother using them in the first place. I actually have never met anyone that's actually used them. With really young babies, they can sometimes do a wee when they get cold on their private parts. So when you take off their nappy and the cold air suddenly goes on them. But really, just fold the dirty nappy back over them while they're doing a wee and then take it off. I understand a lot of people give these as a bit of a novelty, a little joke, but really they're a waste of time in my opinion. I'd rather use my sewing hours to make something that's actually practical that they are going to need to use and the PPTP is just not it. Item number three is something that we actually do use and love, but it's something that I bought and have no regrets. I really am glad that I bought this item rather than make them and that is cloth nappies. I know that there are patterns to make cloth nappies and to me that just was not appealing. There's a lot going into a cloth nappy. You need to have the absorbent layer on the inside, you need to have a waterproof layer on the outside, you need snaps, you need closures and nah, not for me. You need about 30 to 40 nappies to nappy a baby through their infancy and that's just a lot of nappies to have to make. I also don't think it's particularly cost efficient to buy all the resources you would need to make cloth nappies and then make them yourself. I know cloth nappies can seem expensive, but they are expensive because they are genuinely worth that much when you add up the price of all the resources needed to make them. Cloth nappies have been a really good investment for us. I don't regret at all purchasing these. And likewise, cloth wipes. I see a lot of mums who use cloth nappies making cloth wipes to wipe their baby's bottom with. We do use cloth wipes, but I did not make them. 
We just bought cheap packs of face washes, just really thin, soft ones. They're not the fuzzy type, they're just flat. And these have made excellent cloth wipes for us. We have used the same cloth wipes for all three of our babies so far. They wash up just fine, they come out clean, and they're just perfect. You can buy a big pack of 12 of these for pretty cheap. We just bought three or four packs of these and they have lasted through all of our babies so far and I'm sure we'll use them again for this baby. Making cloth wipes, people often use two layers of flannelette and sew around them, but why bother when you can just buy cloths so cheaply? I don't think it's worth making them. Item number four, maybe this is a little controversial, but baby clothes. I know everyone loves cute little baby clothes and I get it, I do. I love cute little baby clothes too, but baby clothes that are super fancy or they're in really tiny sizes, I just wouldn't bother. Any fancy clothes like fancy dresses or little button up shirts for a boy, I really don't think they're going to wear it enough for it to be worth your while making a little baby item like that unless it's for a sentimental thing like Christmas or a birthday. I really just don't think it's worth it in those new baby sizes. Newborn, zero to three months, any of those sizes, they're just gonna grow so fast that they'll outgrow those new baby clothes and you won't get to use them for very long. When a baby's really young, you just want something really simple to put on, zip up, and you're done. And then most of the time, new babies are swaddled up anyway, so you can't even see what they're wearing. Item number five is swaddle blankets. I've already mentioned that new babies, you don't see their clothes very much because most of the time they're all swaddled up. And it's true, we use swaddles all the time. But the thing is, we were given so many swaddle blankets as gifts or as hand-me-downs that it was not worth it for us to have intentionally made swaddle blankets or bought swaddle blankets even because we were just given so many. As a matter of fact, I'm now trying to get rid of some of my swaddle blankets and use them up to make other things. I recently made a video about making some dribble bibs for Alice and I used up some of our old swaddle blankets because we just have so many. So in my opinion, don't bother making a swaddle blanket because you're going to probably get given so many of them. And the only exception I would say to this rule is if you are making like that one intentional special set that you wanted to take a really cute newborn photo in. I get that. that, that that's kind of the exception to the rule. But I wouldn't bother making a whole bunch of them as your primary swaddle set. Item number six is a breastfeeding cover. Now I personally don't think that this item is at all necessary. I don't think you need to buy it or make it. Just don't bother with it at all. I did have a breastfeeding cover when I had Elijah as a newborn, but really the, the time frame of using it was so small between me not knowing what I was doing so I kind of didn't want a cover on so I could see what I was doing. I had a really hard time working out the latch and the supply issues and his reflux so the cover was really kind of detrimental at the beginning. And then once we were comfortable, he was then too aware of the world around him and of not wanting a cover on his face that he would just rip it off anyway. So it honestly didn't serve me very well and I didn't even use it for Alice and Isabel. If I needed to cover up, I'd get a swaddle and just chuck it over when I was breastfeeding and that was just fine. That's all I needed. So breastfeeding covers, overrated in my opinion. Item number seven is pram liners. I have never got a pram liner. I have never regretted not having a pram liner. We just haven't bothered. It's just one of those things I wouldn't bother making personally. I understand why people do it to keep their pram clean and it does look nice having a certain color that matches you know, whatever your aesthetic is for your kid. But, yeah, I can't be bothered. <laughs> if the pram gets dirty, I just get a damp cloth and wipe it. There's never really been anything too drastic that I've needed to clean. Maybe I'm just not very interested in cleanliness, so. Item number eight is sleeping bags. We definitely use and love sleeping bags, but I wouldn't bother making them. And the reason for that is we like having the TOG rating of the fabric. A TOG rating is where the company has had the fabric tested to see how warm it is. And then when you put it on your baby, you can be assured of the rating of the fabric to know that it is both safe for the baby and also keeping them to an adequate level of warmth depending on your climate. There are charts available that have a like a temperature range and it tells you which TOG sleeping bag is most appropriate for that temperature range. I find that so helpful. If I made my own sleeping bags, I wouldn't have had the fabric tested. I wouldn't know the TOG rating of the fabric. I would have to guess and judge what type of temperature to keep the baby. I find this so easy, especially in the beginning when you're sleep deprived. You just want to know this is a safe option. I'll just chuck it on them and they'll be safe. While we're on the topic of swaddle blankets, I definitely wanted to recommend these for a new baby. This is the Love to Dream Swaddle Up. Good morning. Do you want to hop up and have a feed? 
these have been so great for our babies so that they can't get out of a wrapped up swaddle when they're at that stage but their arms are still uh, tucked in tightly so that they don't startle themselves so this design here has been a winner they also come with the sleeves that zip off when you're transitioning to them having their arms out so that's been a great one and then we transition our kids to the sleeping bags that are just loose it's like a big blanket or quilt and again these come in different ranges so this one here is a one tog this is a half tog which is good for our kids in the spring and summer where we live and this really thick quilt like one that Alice uses now in the very peak of winter when it's really cold. I love that we've bought these sleeping bags. They are an investment, but we bought them right with Elijah. We've used them all the way through. They've been great for us, and I'm glad I didn't bother making them. Anything that's a safety risk, like a sleep safety risk especially, it's just not worth it for me. I'd rather just know that they're safe, as safe as they can be in what I put them in for bed. Speaking of being safe in bed, number nine is a cot bumper. I understand a lot of people are nervous about babies sticking their arm out of the rungs of the cot and getting stuck or hurt, but to me a cot bumper is just not worth it. I would not make it, I would not buy it, I would not use a cot bumper. The risk of suffocation is just way too strong in my opinion if they rolled into it and their face was against a piece of fabric that they couldn't roll back away from. So in my opinion, Cot bumpers are just a no-go. I don't think that they're safe. I understand you can get mesh ones, but again, I just, I wouldn't bother. Item number 10 is a cot-sized quilt. I think these are totally unnecessary. They're expensive if you were to buy them new, but they'd be expensive for you to make and get all the materials for, and they'd also be really time consuming, especially because I honestly do not think they will get used. Babies sleep in either a swaddle or a sleeping bag. It's not usually safe to have them in a quilt. I know I personally wouldn't use a quilt on a baby's bed, definitely on a toddler's bed, but not for a baby. So if you really do want to make a quilt for either your baby or for a gift for another baby, make it in a toddler size. That's my recommendation so that when they're up in a toddler bed and it's safer to use, that's when they can use a quilt. Or if you really want to make it baby size, why not make it as a play mat instead with little interactive bits on it so that it can be used on the floor when a baby's doing their playtime or tummy time. People that make quilts are amazing. I think quilting is a beautiful skill and I really do think that your time and effort would be better spent making it larger than making it for a cot. So there you have it. They are my top 10 worst things to be bothered making for a baby. I hope you've liked my opinions. Maybe you haven't. Let me know in a comment below what you thought. Or if you have a different opinion to me, I'd love to hear. Next week, my video is going to be the opposite of this week's video. It's going to be the top 10 things that I recommend you do so for a baby. So if you would like to hear my opinion on those items, then I'd love for you to subscribe so that YouTube knows to send you back here next week to watch that video. If you've made it this far through the video then I'm sure you've liked it so click that like button and you can follow me on Instagram if you'd like to see more of what I've been up to. Thanks so much for watching this video of mine today. I'd love for you to watch another one after this if you would like to. I'll link a few after this video for you to have a look at. So until next time go get creative and I'll see you later.